Hello and welcome. Uh, in this video, we're going to be uh, just exploring some examples of using slope fields in Maple. Okay, so Maple is, of course, a, 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 some, a, some software. Uh, it's good. Uh, it's, it's mathematics software. And I'd say uh, many, um, many universities and colleges have this on their computers, and you can also purchase it usually at the bookstore uh, for some uh, cost. And it's a nice program to have if you want to, especially in differential equations for learning differential equations, because it does a lot of the algebra and solving differential equations for you. So it's great for uh, checking your answer and things like that. But it's also good for just uh, creating graphics. Okay, so in this, in this, we're getting, let's just review really quick again what was slope fields were. If you have dx dt equals f of x comma t. What you do, the first thing you do is use, you know, select a, make a grid, a grid, uh, and then you make a grid in x t space. Okay, so here's your t and here's your x, and then you find some grid, you, uh, uh, some zone you're interested in, like so. And then uh, you know, and then you uh, uh, you know uh, tile area or grid uh, with uh, uh, slope lines um, repeatedly, and uh, and then uh, of course you can uh, uh, know that those lines. Are a tangent uh, to solution curves. Okay, so when we're tiling this area grid, that's you know it's very repetitive, and of course that's of course something that computers excel at. That's it. So let's see if we can actually do some of these. Uh, some of these, uh, some of this work uh, 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 with um, uh, with with the use of. Sorry, I'm going to have to ah delete. Okay, sorry about that. That was just some of my uh, other work popping up from the day. Uh, so uh, um, what we're going to do is uh, you, uh, we're going to actually use computers to do some of this work and do all the graphing for us. And of course, it'll be much more accurate. Than I can do by hand. All right, so let's let's pull up our maple. Okay, here's the maple environment. Okay, put down my pen for a second. And now what I want to do uh, to use maple is uh, it's always a good idea at the beginning of each maple program to to type in the command restart. And what that does is just clear the memory so it doesn't remember anything that happened prior so it kind of blanks out everything so if you're ever having a problem or some glitch with maple if you go back up to your restart command and just hit return again when you put your cursor up there if I put the cursor up there it just zeroes out the memory so it just starts everything over again the next thing I want to do is call out the package that maple has which is when I use the command with I go de tools Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a colon on that because I don't want to see everything that it's calling up. And I hit return on that, and what it's going to do is just load up a bunch of commands and a bunch of knowledge that it's going to bring to bear um, on, our, on our solution. So the next thing I'm going to do is go, um, now I'm going to use the command de um, plot, okay, um, uh, sorry about that, I'm just... Um, so de plot, and I got to use that uh, capitalization there, okay? And then I'm going to write out my de, okay? So what I'm going to do is use the, the differential equations command. So I have to write out the command for uh, for taking a derivative. So I go diff, and then I go x of t, because that's my unknown function, and I say I'm going to take the derivative of it once, okay? And then I'm going to close that parenthesis, and I'm going to equal that. Now I'm going to equal that to the right-hand side, which is going to be my f of x comma t. All right, so let's just pick a particular example. So I'm actually going to pick the example from the previous video. I'm going to say it's going to be t minus x. Okay, and now I have to always put the x of t, because x of t is my unknown function. 
Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is I have to say, okay, what is the unknown function? And that just tells Maple, okay, x of t is what we're looking for, okay? Um, the next thing I need to do is actually put in my range. All right, so this is actually selecting where I want my grid to be. So I'll use the same grid as before. I go negative 5, and I use a dot dot, and then I go 5, and then I go x. It's going to be equal to negative 5 dot dot 5. Okay, and let's, let's hit return and see what happens. Okay, so now you see there's our slope field. And if you remember from... Um, uh, our previous video, this, this should be very familiar to you. Okay, and that looks nice. But now let's actually do one thing further. Let's actually add some initial conditions. Let's actually add some solution curves to this thing. So what I do here for that, I'm gonna put these two uh, square brackets in. I put x, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start at time equals negative five, right? And where do I wanna start? I think I wanna start up in this top corner here, and I wanna watch that solution come down and do that. So I'm gonna start at positive five there. Okay, now let's hit return. Okay, now you see it's drawing that yellow solution curve onto that slope field. So this looks really nice. Let's try another one um, and pick my point. So I'm gonna pick X and I'm gonna say maybe negative four. So that should be somewhere right down about there. Now maybe I'll try negative three. So that'll be right about there. I'm gonna get, um, now I'm going to start actually at negative 5. So I want to watch the solution come from here and then come up and reach and see if it comes back up there. So I'll hit return. We see now you see, yeah, the solutions do in fact kind of co coalesce around that point there. Okay, so that looks really nice. Um, <clears throat> so let's just do some other examples here. Now I'm going to keep editing this, this thing and keep pulling up new examples. So now I might want to try a new differential equation. I'm going to put maybe sine of x comma t. And I'm going to now take my ra time range. I'm going to take it from, uh, I'll keep negative 5 to 5 from now on, but I'm going to go maybe up to 4, and go to go to negative 4 to 4 there. Okay. Take that to 4. Okay, and that I'm going to take to, to 4 as well. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. Okay, wow. So now we have a very different... Um, a different slope field and this makes sense that there it feels like it's sort of repeated patterns of itself right and that's because of course sine is a periodic function so if you go positive from the zero point if you go positive of course you're gonna get positive slopes because sine is positive until you get to sine is equal to pi which is right at uh, 3.14 we see there we got a flat line if we go above that it goes negative again we see the same thing if we go below if x goes below zero it becomes a negative slope until eventually levels out and becomes zero at negative pi. Okay, all right, so let's try a few other initial conditions here. X, uh, now of course if I actually start at zero, um, if I start at negative five, now I want my initial condition to be zero. It'd be neat to see, it should be that, that when I put X equals zero in here, sine is zero, so it should be that there is a solution that follows just right here on the x-axis. Let's see if Maple can find that. Okay, so it does in fact find that. Let's put in some more uh, some more initial conditions. X starting at negative five, time equals negative five. Now I want to try just going slightly above zero. I'm going to try going point oh 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 one above zero and see what happens. Ah, very cool. So we see here it comes along and it stays pretty close to zero, but it eventually it lifts off. Okay, should we try one more? Let's try. I'm going to copy and paste this, and now I'm going to try just 0.01. All right, so I should expect that this solution is going to jump off a little quicker from that zero point. All right, so another thing I might want to do is change my, uh, my axes. So now I'm going to just look at maybe negative 1 to 0, or to 5. And that just gives me a little bit better graph. Uh, so I didn't like that uh, because I had started here with this one. So I'm going to delete that guy there. Hit return. Um, oh, that was negative 5. I wanted to put a, a, a negative 1 here on the X range. Sorry, I made a little typo there. Okay, that's better. So that gives us a little bit better perspective on just the area of interest we have here. Um, and so um, I'm going to go all the way out to... Uh, I'll go uh, 4 and I'll go all the way out. I'll take it all the way time to 10 here. 
So we see now here, we see that there's this nice behavior of solutions uh, where they start close to zero and then they rocket up and they get to this upper point. And they all seem to coalesce around the around the uh, some sort of equilibrium point, which we're going x at pi, x equals to pi. Okay, so this is another example of how to use maple to uh, uh, draw slope fields and also draw solutions. So you get an idea of the behavior of what solutions do. So hopefully this can get you started using maple. And of course, you can uh, jot down these commands, uh, watch the video, and, uh, um, and, uh, uh, and, and try it out yourself. All right, thank you very much.